it all it, the kinks what were wrong with the game were eliminated due to the 3 years. Why is it you laugh so much? <laughs> because you just used the word kinks, and all you've done <laughs> is is, is like made my comment more thing about you just got a hard on for two screens okay today on the channel we are going to be talking about is the wii u worth playing in 2022 um no your turn um i literally wrote down notes on a board over there i ignored them because so i don't believe in anything you say episode. nothing you say i've literally wrote down on a board over there the answer to that question is yes okay why a wii u is worth owning and playing in 2022 <laughs> Explain. There's a lot of reasons to love um, the Wii U. You try, I'll shoot you down. Okay. Um, years and years ago, when um, the Wii U was um, a current gen game console. This is Beyond the Hat, not Shrek. Although, <laughs> you could have done this on well, the Has it ever been technically um, a current generation game console? <laughs> has it ever actually been a current generation game console? No. Considering Nintendo consoles are built using old tech. They're consistently outdated every single time. You cannot say. So there's no such thing as current gen Nintendo. No, there's not. No, okay, no, yeah. No, no. Uh, okay, yeah. Everything that, is last yes, gen. Yes. That, that comment aside, um, there's a lot of reasons to love um, the Wii U. And Switch owners have only recently, within the last half a decade, realised how good the games on the Wii U were. Because before that, people used to ignorantly say that the Wii U has um, terrible games and there's no reason to bother owning one. Mm. That's what people used to say. And now these same jackasses all own Nintendo Switches and own all of those games. And they've paid ridiculous amounts of money for them, even though they're all available readily to play on the Wii U for cheap. Most Wii U games are like £10 each. So that's, first of all, one great reason to want to have a Wii U is because you can access most of the good Switch games for much, much cheaper. Okay, but most people have already got a Switch, so they won't have to go out and buy another console to go and play these games, which negates that price difference, which I'm going to shout, shout out first of all. I um, and don't also, think it does. they've cherry picked all of the best um, Wii U games and moved them over to the Switch and left the shit behind, mostly. Mostly. Um, I'll probably put up a little graphic on screen now, maybe, of a load of really shit Switch games that have come over from the Wii U. I'll just go and find a load. But, um, yeah, the, it negates the price, and also they've already cherry-picked the best ones to move on to the last-gen Nintendo console, which is the Yeah, Switch. but you're not really getting the proper experience if you're playing them on a Switch, because at the end of the day, the Switch isn't a proper game console. It's not even a proper handheld. It's this odd hybrid thing that doesn't serve either purpose particularly perfectly. But if you're playing them on the Wii U, you're getting to play those games the way they were meant to be played. On the it's Switch. Like, it's like playing on the Switch. a Super Nintendo game or playing a Super Nintendo game on some strange Chinese emulation device. You're not getting the true experience. That is what basically playing a Wii U game is on the Switch. You're playing a crap fake version. Because Wii U games are all dual screen. They was all made with a dual screen being intended. So therefore, if you've played that game on a Switch, you've not really played that game. You've played half of that game because you've only got access to half the game because the other half of it's just been cut off and moved into oblivion. Okay. Um, on the little pre-discussion that we had on this, you were talking about kind of some of the things that we would cover. And you said that mostly, when you're looking down at the screens, every, almost every example that you gave me was either a map or a menu. Yeah. You're not getting half the game. It's, they've just moved it onto a single screen. It's not that bad. You that's just not all, that, that, that's, that's, that's some games. But that, that feature of some games really, really helps. And this goes back to the 3DS and the DS as well, which are also much better systems than the majority of game consoles because having dual screens enhances experiences significantly. Probably the most um, well-known example of this would be Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time was already considered one of the greatest games of all time, but when it got moved onto the 3DS, it all it, the kinks, what were wrong with the game, were eliminated due to the 3DS. Why is it you laugh so much? <laughs> because you just used the word kink and all you've done <laughs> is, is is like made my comment more thing about you've just got a hard on for two screens. Like that's it. You're talking about all the kinks. It's like, yeah, you've just you just love to dual screens. You've said about how much you love the 3DS. You're now talking about how much you love the Wii. Yeah. You're saying about how great the um, original DS was. You've just got a hard on for two screens. Two is always better than one. There's no denying that, no matter what way you look at it. <sighs> I don't think that's the case. But going back to bloody Ocarina of Time on the 3DS, Water Temple. Loads of people complained about the Water Temple, yeah? Because they're weak little bitches who aren't any good at games. 
No, it's just the water temple was poorly designed and crap. The no, but it's amazingly designed, but a lot of people are too thick to be able to navigate themselves through it effectively. But for those people, the 3DS acted as a good little crutch for them because no longer, like on the Nintendo 64, did you have to press the start button and then cycle through menus, attach the metal boots, and then cycle back through the menu, press start again, and then descend through the watery depths below. Because with the 3DS version, you had two screens. Like, boots on, boots off, boots on, boots off. That's all it took. And that little things makes a hell of a difference. And that's what makes the Wii U versions of games significantly better than the versions that are available on the Switch. In fact, there's all, even a few games that integrated that function so much it'd be really, really difficult to um, port those games over to other hardware. So you're only going to get to play them if you've got a Wii U. One of them is Xenoblade Chronicles X, which used the second screen a hell of a lot. Um, and the other one is Star Fox Zero. Um, that really was dual screen in every sense. That was sense almost of the word. only the second screen. That was one screen with all of the other stuff. Like you could just move the menus up there, like like down from the main screen. Like it's just stupid that game. Like it is. that is essentially one screen game, but you just use the handheld screen. No, more you than really the other don't. One. You do. It is it's definitely like, a yeah. The handheld screen, screen gets used so much. Like yeah, but. The other one doesn't. <laughs> you, don't, you have to use both of them like a ridiculous mm, amount. I'm not so sure about that. So yeah, to me that that's that's why. Like and again, two games on one console, um, which I've just named as true exclusives. They are. That's enough reason to own a, a console, in my opinion. People spend hundreds of pounds on Amiga CD32s and Atari Jaguars, and arguably they don't have any system exclusives um, that make the systems worth owning. There's no game, there isn't any games on those systems as good as Xenoblade X or Star Fox Zero. I don't even think that's up for debate, really. Yeah, but we're not talking about is the Wii U better than the Atari Jaguar, because I would side with you on that. The problem is, is that there's not enough good system exclusives that you to even actually warrant going If you're out and not one. after it for the exclusives, then there's still other reasons to want that system. And if you're not after it for the cheap price point, there's still more reasons why you um, might want it. It's the only um, Nintendo console where you can play the Nintendo Wii library in HD of a HDMI cable. Okay. That is quite handy. Um, although a cheap upscaler does the same job. But who'd, who's got time for upscalers? They're five quid on Amazon. We're talking normal people here, not geeks. We're not talking about geeks. We're talking about real life people. Fair enough, but... Again, if we're not talking about gigs, then they definitely won't want a Wii U because they're just going to pay the most popular crap all the time. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So it's not going to be, you know... But, yeah. You're not going to sell them on Star Fox Zero. I'm, it's just I still have right. another sales point as well on the Wii U. You can try Wii. again. I'm still not swayed. Uh, dual screens. You, this is the same. Mm. It's the same argument. So you're hard on for dual screens again. Because dual screens are amazing. And they serve so many purposes. And another purpose is that you could download and play some of the greatest Nintendo DS games on a home console using the Wii U. I can kind of see how that's a good thing. But I do so, want to make a little here's side an example. Can okay. I give you one example first, before? You can say your point. Um, if you've got a Nintendo Switch... All you can play on it is a really crappy port of Mario 64, yeah? Whereas if you own a Wii U, you can download and play Mario 64 DS, the enhanced version of the game. That is a better version of that game. Exactly. That's Wii U's better. Although you're basing it on one game again. So what, we're up to like... Still, these are reasons why it's worth having a Wii U in 2022. I'm giving you a lot of reasons. You are, none of them are good enough to sway me though, because you still have to go out and buy a Wii U and then you have to go and find the games. It's just, it's, it's not really worth it. I mean, having a side point, I just want to discuss this because it's come up and now I feel like I want to cover it. So you had the Super Nintendo, had yes. the Super Game Boy. Yep. And then the GameCube had the Advance, like you could play Advance games on that with uh, the Game Boy Player. Yeah, that's the one. Player. Um, uh, why didn't that carry on with this? Because this is a perfect opportunity to play like DS games and have a DS add-on or a 3DS add-on. Like, <sighs> this is the perfect opportunity to do it's that. It's probably Nintendo just a case of Nintendo being Nintendo and um, th- thinking, um, obviously, we shouldn't be giving them extra ways to play their library. We need to find ways to sell them the same library twice. That's very true. Um, but it would, it would have been good to be able to play it 3DS games. It would have been amazing. Games. Yeah. 
It would have been really amazing. Yeah. And I think that would have been great. I, w- I would have preferred that to a Nintendo Switch, whether they, they just made they, a system called the Wii 3, and it was a Wii, but in 3D, with two screens at home. That would have been the best thing ever. In fact, that's what the next Nintendo console should be. Wii 3, calling it now. We don't need a 3D home Wii. console. The Wii 3D. We've already got one. What's that? The Virtual Boy. The Virtual Boy is a handheld. The Virtual Boy is not it's a handheld. It's definitely a handheld. It's definitely not a handheld. I played handheld. it at the Grand Canyon. I've even got video evidence, which you're going to overlay now. Do you need a desk for a handheld? No, but it's always nice to have one. No, it's not. You don't need it. Is. The handhelds are for sitting on the sofa, curled up like, sorry, curled up like this, and playing your games like you're in a hammock. You can't play a Virtual Boy in a hammock. Yes, you could. You'd lay with it on top of you. But it would have made more sense if it was like actually physically attached to your head. It could be strapped on, so to say. Yeah, it, it didn't have a strap on because Nintendo thought strap on were dangerous for it. To be fair, having a strap on on your face is dangerous. I know from personal experience. Yeah, they said that um, basically that Nintendo. You, you frame me now by talking too much about strap ons. Well, I'm only talking a bit about strap ons. It's, it's just too immature, even for me. Like, I'm... well, that's why I'm here. To make you look fun. Wow. Yeah. Um, it would have been better if you could... It, Virtual Boy is not handheld. It's a 3D home console. It's handheld. <laughs> it's not, I, think, I think that's it. We're going too far off task now. No, we're not. This is perfectly on task. This is a whole video in itself. So I think we should close right now. And we'll leave it down to our own audience. Whether they want to see us to shoot another video soon. Discussing is the Virtual Boy a handheld? I think that's probably a good way to go. In fact, let's ask them what they think, mm. whether the um, Virtual Boy is a handheld or a home console. Yeah, we want to know in the comments. Handheld. But in all seriousness, I think all of you, if you don't already have one, should uh, make sure you have a Wii U in 2022. And um, yeah, let us know down below what you think. Yeah. That's it, really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Do your cheerio. Oh, thanks. Cheerio.